Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Flow Church with Bishop Doug Hewitt Mills. I'm Seamus, your Flow Pastor, and we're excited to have you join us on this Sunday at 7 a.m. GMT here in Ghana, wherever you are in the world, whatever time it is, it's a blessing to have you with us. Wherever you are, wherever you are, it's great to have you join us. And as you're joining, make sure that you're liking. Make sure right now, as you're joining, you're fully connecting, you're liking, you're commenting, and you're letting us know that you're here with us on this Sunday for this powerful, powerful time. Let us know what country you're tuning in from. Let us know that you're flowing from whatever nation you're flowing from. Let us know comment in the comment section and it's a blessing to have you either on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever you are, make sure you let us know. It's a real blessing to have you. You can join us on Zoom right now as well. It's a great place to see our members, our global members joining us on Zoom. We can see you physically on camera. So make sure you join on Zoom right now if you want to be part. And it's a real, real blessing to have you with us. What an absolute blessing, what an absolute blessing. Now, we've been going through a series, a series regarding tests. And last week, we went through the test of the wilderness. So this week, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what we'll be going through this Sunday. And we know many, many people right now are going through tests. Many, many people are going through tests right now. And they don't know the Lord. They don't experience the Lord. They don't know that the Lord is their strength. They don't know that the Lord is their shield. And the Lord can get them through anything. So as you're here right now, I think it's an important time to share that link and get it out to those people that don't know. Maybe you know, maybe you know the Lord, maybe you experience Him on a daily basis, but there's people out there that don't have that experience with God. There's people out there that do not know Him. So make sure right now you're sharing that link, sending it out, sending a message with a link, telling them they need to join this service right now and experience the presence of the Lord today. So as I'm talking, don't just watch. Be a sharer. Be someone who gets that link out there. Let it flow. Let it flow on the WhatsApp. Let it flow on Facebook. Let it flow on YouTube. Wherever you can think of, just share. Just click share and send it. Even call some people right now. Let them know that we're live. Maybe you're a pastor in a church and you're getting ready for your service. Invite your members, invite people to join and be blessed by this time so they don't miss out on the blessings that they can use for the rest of the day, the rest of the week, even the rest of the year. Trust that the, God, the Lord will bless them as they join, as they join. Continue to share, continue to like, continue to comment as we now prepare ourselves, prepare our time to be closer to the Lord, prepare ourselves now to be deeper in His presence as we now go over to our time of prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And hallelujah again. Can we get some amens? Hallelujah. We are so grateful to God this beautiful Sunday morning. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And then in verse 2, He continues to say, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Colon. And verse 3, he says, Who forgiveth all thy iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. There are so many things to thank God for. He forgives our iniquities and he heals our diseases. Verse 4, he continues giving us reasons why we should bless the Lord. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction and who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. And verse 5, verse 5, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles well this morning we have so many things to thank God for and we want to say Lord this morning like David said bless the Lord oh my soul we also want to bless you amen now do you notice that bless appears three times just between verse 1 and verse 2 bless the Lord oh my soul and forget not all is bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me 
bless his holy name and verse 2 he says bless the Lord again well I want to encourage you this morning to give God your highest praise because in the Hebrew language when they repeat a word like this three times it means the highest they don't have good better best tall taller tallest so the only way to repeat something the only way to show the highest form is to repeat it so when you hear Jesus say verily verily it means um, I don't know the grammatical expression the superlative and then yeah so verily verily it means you have to take it more seriously so bless the Lord bless the Lord bless the Lord the angels in his presence holy 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 it means the holiest and so this morning you want to also bless the Lord bless the Lord bless the Lord in the highest form for all his benefits you want to rise to your feet this morning we are blessing the Lord together say Lord I bless you with all my heart yes I bless you I bless you bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name you want to rise to your feet with me this morning at home wherever you are rise to your feet and let us mm. bless the Lord together yes. this morning and say oh my soul bless oh, the Lord soul. bless the Lord and all that is within me my hands my eyes my mm. tongue bless the Lord I bless the Lord I thank you I praise you and forget not his benefits yes. whilst we are praying Think about the things that he has done in your life. Mm. His benefits. Yes. He forgave benefits. you your iniquities. Mm. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Let's pray together. Lord, we bless your name this morning. We bless your name. We bless your name this bless morning. Your name we this give morning. thanks to your name. We give thanks. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we are grateful. 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 You forgive all my iniquities. Yes. On Friday, during the flow prayers, I prayed to you. Yes. And I was asking you to have mercy on me. And to forgive me and to cleanse me. I know you heard me. And you are forgiving me. You are the one who forgives me all my sins. And this morning, if I'm standing here, yes. Lord, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I am grateful, Lord. I'm grateful, Father. Oh, I'm grateful. Yes. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I'm grateful. Bless the Lord. Oh, Lord, we bless you. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, who healeth all thy diseases, he healeth all thy diseases, yes. pray and thank him, pray and thank him, yes. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. 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 Yes. Thank you for thank you, thank you. Thank the Lord for for your pastor yes. and your pastors. Thank God, thank him for the spiritual family in which he has put you into. Thank God for the flow check. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Forget not his benefits. Forget not his benefits. Yes, Jesus. We thank and bless your name. Yes, we bless your name. and bless your name. Bless your name. Holanda Balasa. Thank the Lord. 
and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this month. From, from January and February, mm. we're in the month of April. Mm. Lord, we cannot thank you enough. Yes. And so we thank you again and again. Thank you. And we are happy to say thank you. Yes. It is not, it's not burdensome to say thank you. Mm. Keep on thanking the Lord yes. this morning. Thank you, Lord. Give him thanks and praise. Bless, bless the Lord. Give you thanks. Oh, my soul. We give bless you thanks. The Lord. Bless the Lord. All that is within me. Bless, bless his holy name. Bless holy name. Thank the Lord for your salvation. Thank the Lord that He has saved you. Thank the Lord for His salvation. It's something to thank God for. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Oh, my Lord. Who satisfied thy mouth with good things so that thy heart is renewed like the eagles? Oh, I thank you for your yes. loving kindness, your tender mercies. Yes. Mato fada meno mande ne bolasa ora mama mande ke bele mama dala ba ne kana mama so re me de re me de ne mama we give thanks we give thanks we give thanks oh we give thanks we give thanks Oh, we give thanks. We give my God, my God. Oh, express your thankfulness to Him this morning. Let us pray for Thank the Lord for His mercy, His loving kindness, His tender mercy. Oh, Mato Bani Mama, Lema Bore Dere Mama, Sela Toka Panda Lela Mama. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Ma Seme Dere Mama Mama, Oh yes, Jesus, Lord of Lords, you are worthy. Oh, worthy, you are worthy. King of kings and Lord of Lords. I worship you. Oh, hallelujah. Bless the Lord this morning. Glory. King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, you are holy. You are holy. Matala bada miluka. Sede mandolo mozande de bebe. Yeah. Yeah. I worship you. Jesus, Jesus, oh, you are Jesus. Mama, 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 pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, pray in tongues and bless his name. 
Jesus. You are Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. I wish you. You are worthy. Is he not worthy? Is he not worthy? Worthy of our praise. Worthy of thanksgiving. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, yes, Jesus, King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, yes, Lord, Worthy is the land, worthy is the land, worthy is the land. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Oh. Oh. Bless the Lord from the Lord. Bless the Lord. Give him thanks and praise. Thanks. You are worthy, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You are worthy. You are worthy. Malaka bara bara bara. La sanda la mama bara bara bara. Oh, you are worthy, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I worship you. Ma bara 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 bara. Oh, type you are holy. Type you are worthy. Type you are worthy. He is worthy. Mola Santa Baba. Shemalaba. Mekoteneme. Oh, Mola Mame Namama Dalaba. Elene Mola Senene Mama. Ela Mora Deleve Venene Mola. Worshiping this morning, you are worthy, you are worthy, Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Bless the Lord in the spirit. 
Touching our lives. Yes, Lord. With your Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, Jesus. Thank you for another opportunity. Oh, yes, Lord. To be in your house. Yes. yes. Thank you for making it possible. Oh, thank you. For us thank you. to worship you. Yes, Lord. Jesus. In the flow. Oh, Jesus. Church. Yes, yes. Lord. What a great blessing. What a great blessing. In the name of Jesus, oh, yes, Jesus. we pray. We pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the house of the Lord. If you have a seat. I want you to contact somebody, subscribe, flash, share, so that somebody will know that Flow Church is alive and on this Sunday morning or whatever time you are watching. Tonight, it may be evening, it may be afternoon, it may be dawn, whatever. What a blessing. Now, God wants to bless us Amen. and to know, you see, why we are in the house of the Lord okay. and what, 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 is, what is it that God has for a human being. Mm. If you look at John chapter 17, which I want us to turn to. If you look at John chapter 17, this is, some of you may be going to church later or on your way, but that is a blessing. Jesus said in John chapter 17, he said, now Father, glorify thou me. Verse 6, he said, I have manifested thy name. And verse, verse 7, verse 8, he says, Now they have known that all things whatsoever, verse 7, thou hast given me are of thee. Verse 8, For I have given unto them the words which thou givest me, and they have received them. I've given them what? The words. So, the great thing, in verse 14 again, he says, this is verse 8, but in John 7 verse 14, he says, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. I've given them thy word. So, God is here to give you his word. And his word is going to produce everything that you need. Amen. 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 His word is the main thing. Hallelujah. But you see, sometimes you, even, even the Bible, you can have the whole Bible in your hand, but you have not received the word. And you may have all the books, but you have not received the word. And you may have listened to a message, but you have not received the word. That is why people 
sleep together for years, but don't get pregnant. Because the word may be flooded, the seed may be flooded into you, but you, you, you don't receive it. So it doesn't bring a certain fruit. So, when you receive the word, you start to receive God and start to receive the anointing, the beauty, and the glory of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So this morning, I want us to pray. Um, I don't know what is, what is it that keeps us from receiving the word. And sometimes, you know, sometimes we have to go through a, a, an experience, sometimes a bad experience, before we can receive. Like something happens in our lives before we can receive a word. One time I found out, you know, medically that some women have um, antibodies. You know what antibodies are? Antibodies, when you, when you have a vaccine, it's, it's to stimulate your immune system to produce antibodies. Antibody is a name for a body that is against antibody. It's a body that is against a germ. Do you understand? Oh, yes. like th- these are gems. And this body, the body of a part of uh, uh, the human being, mm-hmm. like a cell or something, but they didn't know what name to call it, so they called it a body. All right. It's like an antibody. Mm-hmm. It's a body or a particle that is against gems. Gems, like what gems? Like viruses, like COVID virus. Do you see? Or bacteria. Like what bacteria? Like sore throat bacteria. Do you see? Or parasites. Like what? I've mentioned three big categories of gems. Viruses. Bacteria and parasite. Parasite like what? Like malaria parasite. So even if you are not a doctor, you've understood antibodies against germs. Do you see? Now, one day I found out that some women, right, around the womb, their womb, the entrance to the womb is called the cervix. Okay. Cervix is a, a word that means the neck. So, it, some women have antibodies against sperms, okay. not against germs. Hmm? I don't know whether I'm talking to the right right group of people. You see, I first tried to explain what is an antibody for a long time. Some people thought I've deviated into chemistry. But I was trying to explain to you that the antibody fights diseases, it fights germs, different types. You see, the virus is very different from a bacteria. You see, a bacteria is something that I can look in a microscope and see the the bacteria. I can actually see with my eyes in a microscope or a parasite. I can see. That's why they take blood for para MPs, malaria, malaria parasite, because they can see it. Just put it under the mic and you see. But a virus you cannot see. Like that. You need something called an electron microscope to see. An electron microscope can be as tall as three story buildings. What? To just to see the virus. It's too tiny 
and need such a special place to see a virus. They're almost demons. Yes. So invisible. So the body has vir- uh, antibodies for all these, especially if you've had a vaccine, vaccination against. That has wiped out some disease like smallpox. They no more have it. And polio is a virus. It's a virus, it's a terrible virus. That's why we give it at birth to children, lest they get a virus, which causes people to be paralyzed. You see. Now, how can you have an antibody against the sperm that is coming to give you a child, which you are trying to have a child. So they have antibodies that fight what you actually need. What do you think? That is really funny, isn't it? And I don't know whether some people have spiritual antibodies against the word. Like when a particular seed is coming towards you, some antibodies come up against the word, the message, maybe particular messages. So that's how come you can have been in church for a long time and you, you, you still have not received the word, yeah. So that's why Jesus said, I've given them thy word. I've given them thy word. And what? And they have received them, the words. Not only have I given them, but they have actually received the words. They didn't send antibodies to go and bomb the words. So this morning, we have to ask ourselves, that what word has the Lord given to us or has he been trying to give to us that some antibodies are fighting? Because sometimes you'll be in church, you you keep on preaching about people, you know, have to work for the Lord. They, They will never work for the Lord. Or you preach about Loyalty, of how people should be faithful. And that's exactly what they will not do. Or you preach about certain things in marriage. Brothers may receive some. Sisters may not receive some. Other times, brothers will also not receive. Sisters will have developed antibodies against certain messages. Huh? I think I'll close now because... People are getting angry with me now. Antibodies are flying all over the place. (laughs) So, you know, I've, I have tried sometimes, you know, because we don't have long to live. We don't have long to live. I mean, if you are an average person, you can maybe expect to live up to about 70. If you are an average person. But it's dropping even. So after this life, after existing here, we are going to still exist Somebody said, I don't, I don't think so. You don't think so? Where are all the people who are dead? Where did they go? And where are they now? If there is no life after this life, we are fools, I tell you. Look at my face, I'm a fool. If there is no life after this life, we are fools. Because we could have had all kinds of things and done all kinds of things. 
but there are a whole lot of things that we are just not. I mean, they, they also bring trouble, but still, we are also not doing them. Are you listening to me? So, we need to please God desperately before we see him. God is wild. Because I'm surprised that all the people who are dead, they've never opened their eyes to say, wow. But I hear Abraham, when he was dying, I think he, he, you know, these are stories. It's like he opened his eyes. and he, No, 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 it was his first wife when she was dying. She said it's, it's real. It's, it's too real. She, she sort of died and came back and said it's too fantastic. But I think heaven will be real because a lot of the things about life on earth that the Bible says are so true that it's also fantastic. Like if it says beauty is vain, it, you will think that it's not true. They have beauty contests. It means a contest of uselessness. <laughs> contest of uselessness. Now the Bible says that it's vain. But you may not believe it. Wow. But as you get older, ah. you, you start be talking as though you are a walking Bible. Hey. That's one of the things that makes me believe that mm. heaven, the things about heaven and hell are true. Yeah. Because the things about earth from this same book mm. are also so true. Mm. And if you live a little, you see. Mm. Yeah. When the Bible says that, what is your life? A man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. It, it's true. The more toilets you have in your house, the more bathrooms, the more rooms, the more houses, the more anything, the more money, it becomes useless. And realize that your life does not consist in the abundance of the things that you possess. It's true. Yeah. People possess their lives is not happy because of all the things they have. So, before we are going to see our Father, we have to please Him Hallelujah. as much as we can. Do you get it? Yes. yes. And so, one of the things that I asked God, how can I, and this is personal, I'm sharing with you, so I don't know whether I should stop. Yeah, I'm saying something that it's like I asked God, what, what do you want me to do? And so he showed me this amazing thing, what Jesus said, that the words, he says, the words that I have given them the words. I've given them the words. And then he also said, I've given them my words and I have finished. <laughs> I've finished the work. Yes. So he combined finishing the work and giving them the words. The work, the work you give me, I've finished it. And I've given them the words. So I realized that to do the work is to give the words. And the best for you is to receive the words Hallelujah. that God has. Yes. I've glorified thee. I have finished the work that thou gavest me. Amen. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, this morning I want you to believe that the greatest thing for you is to receive the word. So anything that is fighting you receiving a word, I don't know what it is. But how come certain things never work on you? Do you see? And today I'm going to show you a key to letting some words that have never entered you to enter you. But that's the main thing, yes. is to finish, yes, the words, the work. Amen. Amen. 
Now notice verse 8. He says, I have finished. I have glorified thee. I have finished. Then he says, for, because I have given to them the words. That's why he's saying, I have finished. He says, I have finished the work for, which means because, or change the version maybe, it says, I have finished the work for, no, 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 because I have finished the work for I have given them the words. Wow. Wow. Or this version says, because I have given them the words you gave to me. Oh. That, that's how come you finish your work. Wow. So, Pastor, if you are going to, tonight, today, mm. to finish the work, mm. you finish because you have given them the words. The words. Hallelujah. Because I have given them the words. Mm. Look at it. The King James says four, but you know, four means because, but I just brought another version. Amen. Amen. That is why the words that I'm preaching are very important. All these messages, ready at 20, if you love the Lord, loyalty and disloyalty, those who leave you, those who, whatever, many are called. Thousand micro churches. And so these are the words that God gave to me. And these are the words that I'm also giving. If I can successfully give these words to some people that are finished. I can, Jesus never built even a building, one building. Why do we build buildings? We build buildings so that we can have a place to give the words for people to receive the words. That, that's why. But Jesus didn't even bother. Jesus didn't even bother. It's the words. And it's the, those are the words that we are on. So today, open your heart. Huh? And if you are the pastor or preaching, remember that it is the words you are giving. The, the words must be given. And if you are receiving, the words must be received. Yes. The words must be received. Yesterday, somebody sent me a message. Um, yeah, you know, get me my phone. I will, I will show you uh, a message that somebody sent to me. Yeah. I mean, we are having a flow church, and I don't see why we shouldn't flow. Subscribe, share, call, like, and press the love button or whatever. The thumbs up. Keep them going. Yes, keep them going. React to the word. Amen. I have glorified thee. On earth, I have finished the work. For, for, verse 8 says, for, because I've given them the words. I've finished, I've given them the words. So finishing God's work is to give the words. And then you are done. You are done. Amazing. Now, I said I was going to show you a message. I was going to read a message. And I think I'm going to do that. Do you want me to share my message with you? Yes. Oh, yes. You see, he, when I, when I share, you see, one, one day I was listening to a message on how I came to be anointed. How I came to be anointed. And what I was listening to a message was Kenneth Hagin was preaching. 19, 
88. Now, I've been listening to Kenneth Hagin for at least 10 years. But I don't think a certain word entered into me till that day. And I, but I liked it. That's what I'm saying, that people have sex for years and have the cervix or the entrance to the womb flooded. Say flooded. Flooded, flooded with seeds. But they never get pregnant. In fact, fertility work. You'll be happy when you can find a cause as to why the person is not getting pregnant. You'll be happy to know that, oh, this is the reason. This is vague. Because you have both parties are okay, but still not working. Do you see? Seeds. So that day, I had been flooded for 10 years. Because I knew Kenneth from about 1978, and this was now 1988. Yeah, I've been flooded with these words. This is 1988. I'm in university. I'm in my final year. I've been listening to Kenneth Hagin for since 1978. Yeah. Then that night, I was being flooded again. Hmm? The first time that I heard Kenneth Hagin say that Jesus appeared to him, I have to sit down and ask myself, is this man serious? <laughs> You get it? But it takes time for you to accept that the things are true. And I real. He said, Jesus appeared to him. Jesus sat down and talked to him for two hours. And Jesus was wearing slippers. And that he could see his toes. And that Jesus could touch his head. He said he was so close to him, Jesus could touch him from the side. And Jesus said, I've come to talk to you about what happened last, uh, last night in church. When you were preaching. No, I mean, this is serious. And he said that the church that he, he was, they had polished the floor of the stage. It was, I think, like a wooden stage or something. It was well polished. And there was a tip machine on the side of the pulpit. And they used to have these big tape machines of, of some sort. And I think he stepped on it and... It slid on the floor, and he fell on his hand, on his elbow, and the elbow, this part, got broken. And he was on the way to the, he was taken to the hospital, preaching. And then in the car, he heard a loud voice, and the voice spoke. He said, nobody in the car heard, but he heard the voice as he was on the way. Hey, look, it takes time to assimilate all these things. <laughs> How many, and he explained, he said, this is what the prophets used to hear when he says, and the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah saying, it, he was explaining that that's how it is. You hear, actually hear the words being spoken to you. And the Lord said to him in the car, you will be okay. And I will, I will speak to you about this. I mean, how many of you have been to hospital, but no voice came on the way to the hospital? And then he said, Jesus appeared the next day after visiting hours. And he thought it was a nurse. It was getting to the evening around five. Amazing. So I was listening to these stories. I just like listening to his stories. And then something entered into me. And then I heard a voice saying, from today, you can teach. 1988, June. From today, you dad, you can teach. But I thought I could teach already. So, because it's not, those would not be my words. I would have said, receive a gift of healing. Uh, like receive a gift of teaching. And I wouldn't even have received teaching. I would have said, oh, it would be healing or something powerful. Mm. <laughs> but the word of the Lord that came to me said, from today. You can teach. I didn't even know what it was. Is it not fantastic? It's very fantastic to me. But you see, that is when the words 
that Kenneth Hagin was ministry. That's when it came into me. Yes. Even though I've been flooded with it. But anyway, I got a message yesterday and uh, a brother said to me, because he, he was preaching, he sent to me a message and he said, you know, Daddy, I was preaching a message from your, one of your books. And he sent me the picture of a large conference. Everybody was listening to him and laughing. And I saw him laughing the same way that I laugh sometimes when I'm preaching. Oh, yes. The, the anointing was flowing. Yeah. And he said, he said, Daddy, I was giving them testimonies of what listening to messages has done for me. And you can see they are mesmerized. Yeah. Then he said, I got a testimony from a pastor called, I don't, I'm not going to mention his name. He said he is the brother to a pastor in Nigeria who has 45,000 members in his church in Nigeria. And he said that this brother said that his brother, that is his brother who has this church with 45,000 members. It's his brother who is saying this testimony. That his brother said that he would soak in Bishop Oyedepo's messages till one day he had a voice saying to him, from today, you can teach like him. Yeah. Yeah. He said, from today, you can teach like him. Amazing. And he said, that's when his church began to grow. He said, what you have been saying to us is real. Yeah. He, 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 this brother is the brother of the pastor who has the 45,000 members. And his brother, he knows his brother. So this was his brother's telling him that this is what happened. He used to listen to Bishop Oedipo's preaching. And one day, he heard a voice eh, saying to him, from today, you can teach like him. Fantastic. And he said, Daddy, what you have been saying to us is real. You see, that's what I'm trying to explain to you that Jesus finishes his work when his words enter. When his words enter, it's like something changes. Anyone who is listening to me, any child who is listening, any servant of the Lord listening, I'm telling you, when his word enters, it's like a seed. When it comes in, I mean, you won't be surprised. What can change about you so much? Look at me. I'm the dullest brother. I was born giftless. I, maybe you had gifts when you were born, but I was born giftless. <laughs> Never chosen. For anything. Huh? Mocked at. Laughed at. Rejected. And God gave me that small seed. From today. You can teach. I remember when I started writing. People were trying to change what I was writing. You know these are my simple messages. That are being preached. So change it like this. I said, I said you know what. Let me just say the words the way that I say them. It may not sound so powerful why you should be a basenta leader. It may not sound powerful. Yes. Or a snake junction. It may not sound prophetic. But let me share. Those are the words that he has given to me. And I was also given. Yes. And they have received them and kept them. Or, uh, why are you not a missionary? So, what, what is that? How, how can a church grow with such messages? Is it a question or a, a message?
Can't you do just a little bit more? Or the church must end or it will end. Or what else? Losing suffering. Somebody says, what is this? Nobody will ever want to buy this. But by the grace of God, we have over 50 million books, the same topics. So, I want to encourage you to, I don't know, I, I don't know what to do. You see, there's something that I want to tell, but I can't say it on the micro. But I don't know what to do to tell you to receive. I mean, relax yourself. Open yourself. Huh? I don't know how to say it in your language. How, 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 how do you say it? Like, open up in your heart. And let the Holy Spirit, you know, speak to you these words of life. In the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with God. Never think that you cannot be anointed. You see, that's also one of the things. You see, when I listen to Kenneth Hagin, yes, I desire to have exactly the same experience that Kenneth Hagin. I want all this, a word, the voice to speak to me and Jesus to come, you know. But you see, my strong desire for those things hasn't yielded, I haven't yet had those. I don't know if I will, because now I'm 60 years I've been trying to get all those things. But it has yielded something else. And I've also seen the glory. It may not be exactly in that way. Yes. Yes but you still receive that glory when you receive the seed. May your spirit open up and may you receive the glory from the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. Take out an offering at this time. I want you to take out an offering of a special offering. Listen, I see something like a a bowl, a big bowl of oil. And I see you putting a seed into the oil. Supernaturally. Something will come out of that oil that is oily. And so, plant a seed today in this amazing anointing Request from your spirit and your soul, Lord, on this Sunday morning, afternoon, evening, you may be on Flow Pacific or Flow America or Flow East. Let the Lord anoint you. Yeah. Somebody will say, I'm a small boy, but is it it small boys that he anoints so that you grow? With that gift. You know, when the Lord anointed me, I was 25 years old. And I, did, I had, my church was a little fellowship. That, that was all, that's, those are the people that he wants to anoint. So, how many small boys do we have here? Small boys and small girls. Yeah, this is what God loves. But when you are small, you are sort of easy. When you grow a little, you, have, you become uptight. Do you understand uptight? Check it in the dictionary. What is the meaning of uptight? <laughs> Sow a seed in the oil. Sow a seed into the anointing. Yes. Look at the meaning of uptight. Tense. Nervous or jittery. Annoyed or angry. Stiffly conventional in manner or attitudes. Stiffly conventional in manner. That's why you, you can't receive the anointing. Because you become stiffly conventional in your manner and in your attitude. 
That's uptight. Amazing. That's why God loves the children. There's no convention. There's no formula. Because you see, I'm just sharing with you. I was just, I was just chatting. And then the blessing was flowing. So sow a seed into that oil. And God is going to bless you. You are going to have a different level of grace on your life. Father, I thank you for everybody who's tuned in at this time. Whatever time it is, Lord. Lord, I know you have a great blessing for all of us on this amazing flow service. You are touching our lives. You are touching young boys and young girls. You are filling us with the Spirit. You are changing our lives forever. Thank you for everyone. Thank you for everyone. Thank you. Thank you for giving us the anointing. Thank you for giving us the seed. Thank you, Jesus. The word. The word. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. We receive. Yes, Lord. And as we sow our seed, yes, Jesus. Bless from north to south to east to west. Yes, Lord. Let there not be a giftless. Speak your word. Man amongst us. Yes. yes a man without a gift. In the name of Jesus. A man without grace. A man without freshness. A man without oil. But let there be grace. Grace. Let there be power. Let there be power. Let there be the Holy Spirit. Let there be the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord. Upon our lives. In Jesus' name. I want us to stand to our feet yes, Lord. and we are going to pray oh, thank you. for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Mm. Listen, what you never thought you could ever have, yes. I feel today, just spend some oh, time yes, praying yes, for the Spirit, yes, for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Father, yes. we ask you for the Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus. The Holy Spirit. As we pray. Oh, I pray for the Holy Spirit. I pray for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I pray for the Holy Spirit. I want you to type, I receive the word and I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the word and I receive the Holy Spirit. Today, I receive the word and I receive the Holy Spirit. What a blessing. What a blessing. I receive the word and I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the word. I receive the Holy Spirit. And I receive the word. I receive it. I receive the word. I the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lake Mama, I receive the word. I receive the Holy Spirit. Kamba la sama la 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 la. Lema mora de 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 lema bara da. I receive the word. I receive the word. The kingdom of God the Holy Spirit. is like a mustard seed. The least of all the seeds. But when it is it becomes a mighty tree to burn and come and rest. There are many things they start out small, 
I receive the word. I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the word and I receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and I receive the word. I receive the word. Oh, my mustard seed. Oh, my mustard seed. Oh, my mustard seed. Oh, my mustard seed. Oh, my mustard I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the word. I receive the Holy Spirit. And I receive the word. Yes. I I receive the Holy Spirit and I receive the way. I receive the way. I receive the Holy Spirit and I receive the way. Masama 
I receive the word. I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the word. And I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the Holy Spirit, I receive the Word, I receive the Holy Spirit, and I receive the Word. Shabala babana na, dete bele me dele mama, sima tiba, kon teba, melendo, rabadi mele, rabadi mele, rapola, sama le me deba, lo se bene mama ga baradi mama, ete kala marada, le barada la babala, la soma mama le me me da, oh, ete matula, si mufala, repende me 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 ma. I receive the word, I receive the Holy Spirit, I receive the word, and I receive the Holy Spirit, I receive the word, and I receive the Holy Spirit, I receive the word, and I receive the Holy Spirit.
Sogadiba, Manasinde le mama, oh repepe le 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 repepe le 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 I receive the word. I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the word. I receive the Holy Spirit. Ramama, le mama la la mama, raba ba la ba ba la ba, le mama 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 mama, le la saba, ke ba la saba, me la mama da, le mama da la ba ba, le soda mama da la ba ba, le mama de 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 de, bola soda de 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 de, le bobo la mama mama de 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 de, ba 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 la ba la ba la ba. I understand more than the ancient because I keep that precept. I'm sweeter than words, sweeter than honey. Sweeter than I receive the word. I receive the Holy Spirit. Lift your voice and pray. I receive the word. I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the word. I receive the Holy Spirit. Makela soda mama, ela mama de 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 mama na la mama de 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 de
I receive the word and I receive the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. My God, I receive the word and I receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, Pray and tell the Lord, Lord, I receive the word and I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the word and I receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, 
La gama mala sovada de mama mama le shaba baba la tani mola la sani mola ra baba la mama de le bebe ho ra baba de le bebe la sabara de le bebe open up my heart to receive your word la gapa la baba de le bebe you be changed oh le me de le bebe la mama da mama de le bebe in the holy spirit In the spirit, drink from the waters, the living water. You need to go in the spirit, feel it up. Take it in the spirit, you've been witnessing. Let the Holy Spirit come upon you.
let there be a flow of the river yes. of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit. Yes. The one who changes our lives yes. and our ministry. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you have a seat. Now, wherever you are watching from all over the world, um, I believe that God is anointing you this morning. And I want you to take out your offering today. I want you to take out your sacrifice. No matter who you are. Oh, yes. yes. And I believe, listen, before we receive the anoint, the, uh, the offering, I want you to see, no matter who you are, look at Isaiah 45. It says in verse 1, that says the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus. It's amazing that my name is Cyrus. It's actually a name that my, my mother gave to me. Yeah. Didn't know anything about anything anointed. But that says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus. Wow. But this Cyrus was not a, a pastor. He was just a king. And he was like a king of Syria or Russia or I mean, somewhere, Asia. Not of Israel. But he says, that says to the Lord, to his anointed, to Cyrus. So what does, what does anointing do to Cyrus? Whose right hand I have holding? So suddenly... Your right hand is being held. Wow. To subdue nations. Nations, whatever is before you, bows. And I will lose the kings. The loins of the kings. To open before him the two-leaved gates. And the gates shall not be shut. And verse 2 says, And I will go before thee and make the crooked way places straight. That's the effect of the anointing. And I will break in pieces the gates of brass. And I will cut in sunder the bars of iron. Wow. Wow. This is all the effect of the anointing. And then he says, And I will give thee the treasures of darkness, hmm. money, and the hidden riches. Is money hidden or is it open? Do you find money on the street? No. That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by name, am the God of Israel. Now, as we give our offering on this amazing flow service, I want you to know that God is pouring out his anointing. You know, believe. These great things that you hear is happening to you. Amen. I want you to believe that it's downloading in your personal life. Amen. Yes. Amen. That says the Lord to Cyrus, my anointed. Wow. Wow whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. I will lose the loins of kings. And then I'm going to open gates and give you the treasures of darkness. People that have done evil and people that have lived in darkness, the treasures that they have accumulated will be transferred to your hand. Okay. Good night. See you to uh, see you tomorrow.
When you hear good news, you don't even show any, any sign of Amazing. So, every bank you pass by, just prophesy to the bank, you, uh, you have hidden treasures here. By the anointing, they will come out of there. They will come my way. Uh, every bank from today, when you look at them, I said, these are treasures of darkness. Hidden riches. Just prophesy. And say, by the anointing, these hidden riches are coming my way. In the name of Jesus. Do you believe in the anointing? Yes. So, take out your special gift. Because there's no change in financial things till there's a seed. Yes. That's why God gives seed to a sower. And he expects it to come with a lamb that you would have eaten for dinner. Lamb chops. Lamb, lambs are used for lamb chops. It's one of the favorites you can get in a hotel. Lamb chops. Next time you are in the hotel, check out if there are lamb chops and try it. Okay? Lamb chops. Then another place you can get lamb is curry. Lamb curry. Because you see, where they make curry, the cows, they, 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 they are special gods and things. That's where they can. So lamb is used more for curry. Oh, yes. And it's curry, not curry. Thank you for left and right. Are you with me? Yes. And it's used for some other things. So when you come to present your lamb before the Lord, the meat for your curry and your shish kebab and other kebabs. Lamb kebab. Hmm? It's, it's gone. You have to eat your stew with egg. Or with beans. Because you gave your meat away to the Lord. Or maybe some sardines. Sardine curry. Hmm. Doesn't sound. Doesn't sound like something that will work. So, I see doors to internationalization, subduing nations, open to your life as you sow the seed. You subdue the nations. Today, I'm seeing almost four thousand people joining us. Yes. So keep sharing and take your offering out because nations are being subdued and your life is being blessed. Even if you are angry with me, don't be angry with the word. I'm just reading verses to you. Yes, I'm reading verses to you. Nice verses. That should make you skip around like a lamb. What a blessing. Father, we thank you for an amazing seed that we are sowing. Amen. Amen. And thank you today for a great blessing. Talambo, Timberindo, Paledegesesh, Shamando, Sendelebeke. Bless every sower of a seed who is sowing a seed in any of the ways that is shown on the screen. Thank you. Anoint them, Lord, and let the gates that are holding hidden riches open and give to your people the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that we may know that you are the Lord who has called us by name, the God of Israel. Thank you for this blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you sowed your seed. And um, 
I'm going to invite the worship team to give us a short song. And then I want to share with you, it's, everything is very brief because we're closing this service in 20 minutes. But at least one song, and I want you to get up and shake. You see, don't be uptight. Today we've learned a word. Those of you who are just joining, you missed a lot. Uptight. And I want you to put the meaning of uptight. If you can type it out so that it's nice. No, no, this way it's so small, but show us. Write it out what uptight. Uptight is going out of flow church. It is tense, nervous, and jittery. Annoyed or angry. Stiffly conventional. Yes. This is a very apt description of some older people. People who are from the age of 40, 40, 45, 50 upwards. They are stiffly conventional in manner and in attitude. Wow. Stiffly conventional. So at home, please. Uh, get up, put your glasses down, and relax. I don't know how to say it in your language. All right? No, write it out. Write the first one out nicely for us. Those words, I, I need them. The three definitions of uptight. Stiffly conventional in manner or attitude. Hmm. Would you like to be married to somebody who is stiffly conventional in manner or attitude? There's something I want to tell you that my pastor, when I was in England, told us. That a lady said about her marriage. She said... I thank God for all these years that I've been married. I won't say what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What she said, I'm not going to say what she said, but it was something like, I've, I thank God that all these years that I've been married, I've been stiffly conventional in manner and attitude. I'm not saying exactly what she said for various reasons. But it's like, I thank God that for all these years that I've been married, I've been stiffly conventional in manner and in attitude. No, 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 no. That's uptight. So let's welcome the worship choir. Just a song. And then after that, we are going into the test. Of the righteous. Yes. Oh, we want it all on one screen. All on one screen. Beautiful. Let's welcome our worship team. Wow. Wherever you are in the world, what a blessing. I fix my eyes on you. The author of
Thank you. Righteous for five minutes because we've already had a message. So we, we have flowing church. Psalm 26, verse 1. Vindicate me, O Lord, American version, for I have walked in my integrity and I've trusted the Lord without wavering. Examine me, O Lord, and put me to the test. Refine my mind and my heart. Amen. For your goodness is before my eyes and I've walked in your truth. Amen. Amen. So he said put me to the test. So the tests occur in God. Amen. Amen. And we're, we're going through the tests of the righteous. And the first test was the test of Mara. And what is the second test? The test of the wilderness. Now today is the test of war. Yes, the test of war. God allows his children to have wars. Right? God allows his children to have wars. Judges chapter 2, verse 21. It says, And I, in turn, in the American version, will no longer drive out before them any of the nations which Joshua left when he died. In order to test Israel by them, in order to test Israel by them, whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk in it as their fathers did or not. So the Lord allowed those nations to remain, not driving them out quickly. <laughs> And he did not give them into the hand of Joshua. Is this not amazing? amazing. God says, I I did not, I will no more let your enemies be defeated and driven out in order to test Israel. To do what? To test Israel by them whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk in it as their fathers did or not. These are the tests of the righteous. Like I said, there's five, six, seven, depend on how many I want to give you, but these are the tests of a righteous person, of God's people. Judges chapter 3, verse number 1. This is the test of war. And this is the test where God leaves undefeated enemies around and in your life in order to test you about something. It's called the test of war. Now, Judges chapter 3. Let me give you another scripture so that you will Believe. Now, these are the nations which the Lord left. You see, I, 
I, the first one I read was Judges chapter 2. But now I'm in Judges chapter 3. And he says, now these are the nations which the Lord left to test Israel by them. Do you see? That is, all who had not experienced any of the wars of Canaan. Because when you've never had war, you don't know certain things. Only in order that the generations of the sons of Israel might be taught war. Those who had not experienced it formally or previously. Amen. Amen. Verse number three. I think I've even finished preaching by reading these verses. These nations are the five lords of the Philistines and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites who lived in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal, Hermon, as far as Labo, Hamath. All right? And they were for testing Israel. They were for what? Testing, Testing Israel. <clears throat> to find out if they would obey the commandments of the Lord, which he had commanded their fathers through Moses. Amen. Amen. So, you can see that God leaves enemies who could have been vanquished and could have been eliminated and decides to allow them to be there to teach Israel about war. Because war is a whole art. You see, when Iran sent um, missiles to Israel, like drones and cruise missiles, do you know what is a cruise? Cruise, it's like it's cruising in the air. It's just cruising like a plane. Because it's, it's, it's far. And it flies on its own. Without wings. And it has its own mind and computer in it. That is going to a particular house. Or location. Hmm. But Israel stopped many of them. That's a cruise missile. It's moving the air. Yeah. It's like a plane. So if your country doesn't know war, these things will just fall on, on everybody and you, you just be. How do you stop all these things? Are you listening to me? Oh, yes. So... God allows undefeated enemies. Amen. Amen. And those enemies exist to test you and to train you in fighting. Now, conflict and war and fighting about things, for things, because of things, is something that exists from the earliest time. That's how we are. Abel and Cain started it all from the very beginning. Are you with me? Oh, yes. And it has continued. So if today there are some undefeated and vanquished enemies still taunting you and issues that have not concluded and have ended and keep on being there. You may be experiencing a test of war where God is training you to fight wars. 
many of the stories that I have written about in my books, those who leave you, those who this, those who disloyal, those who are forget, are all true stories of real people. When people read it, it sounds like something fictional. But I started writing the loyalty book. I wrote it and published it in 1998. I don't know how long that is. Is it 10 years already? 20 years already? Yeah. 26 years ago. That is when it was launched in Collegono at the bookshop. That's when that book was launched. But we were teaching those things before. All the things in, in it are true. But the new generation of people ha- haven't seen or hadn't seen these things. So you, you, your church will not know how to protect the church. Well, the church is not something that will just be left to just grow, 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 grow. I mean, if you were the devil, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. You would attack the church. And the best way to attack the church is from inside. So you would attack the church from inside with insiders. But when people don't know, they just look. Even I've had a lot of ministers of the gospel who found me. What what are you teaching? Somebody said, what is loyalty? It's not something that is taught. It's something that is commanded by your lifestyle. It, it, It exudes. It comes out of you. I said, wow. But when he had an orangu, he changed his mind. And he said my book was one of the best books ever. Yeah. So war, you know, how many are tired of your enemies? How many are tired of enemies generally? Yes. You want them to just, you just want certain things to just go away. Do you see? Yes. But that is not how it is going to be. There is, there is conflict. And there are going to be more and more conflicts all the way to the end of your life and your ministry. So when war comes in your life, remember that sometimes your enemy should have been vanquished. There's a song, From victory until victory, Shall he lead till every foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. Till every foe is vanquished. Look at the words. Till every foe is vanquished. But why are the foes not vanquished? Because God has left them test you to test you oh yes amazing now let me share with you what the test of war is about and I'm just going to read out a list to you and we'll close you can think about it it's actually a book but I'm just sharing with you Number one is a test to test your strength and your weaknesses so that you strengthen your weaknesses. You see, a test flight, do you see, tests to bring out the weaknesses. So that you strengthen them. How many would like to sit on a plane that has not been tested? That the door is closes when it's closed. Huh? What about if you are on a plane and the door opens? And you happen to be walking to the toilet or something. And you are near the door. And the door opens. Because they didn't test that. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. So it is to test you so that your weaknesses come out and then you strengthen your weaknesses. So in 1 Kings 
chapter 20 and verse 19, all right, it said, these young men of the princes came out and they followed them and they slew every man. And the king of Israel went out on chariots and slew the Syrians. And the prophet came to the king of Israel and said, Go and strengthen yourself and mark and see what thou doest. In verse 22. For at the return of the year, the king of Syria will come up against thee. All right? And the servants of the king of Syria said unto him, right, the, their gods are the gods of the hills. Therefore, they were stronger than us. But let us fight them against them in the plain. Surely, we shall be stronger than they. So, you see, you may be strong in the hills, but you're not strong in the plain. So they told them, go and get yourself ready. Because they're going to fight you in another way. Okay. In the plains. Okay. That's when you see that. You should have strengthened your abilities on the plains. Not hills. Because you can fight on the hills, but you can't fight on the plains. So some of us are good at this, but not good at that. Like you are good at being a Christian in Ghana, but you're not good at being a Christian in the UK. Or you are good at being a Christian in Ghana, but you can't fight in another country. Or some of you are good at being good when you are near, but when you are a little far, you are not good at all. It's not good at all. Because your gods are the gods of the hills, but not the gods of the plains, which means that you are strong on the hills. That's what the Syrians said. This guy can fight on the hills, but he can't fight on the plains. There are people, I'm so sorry to say, they were once here. As soon as they got to their home country of whatever, that was the end. They became drug addicts, bandits, and all kinds of things. I once heard a pastor, somebody that I appointed as a pastor, had become an armed robber. How does a pastor become an armed robber? But maybe when he was near, and not, not just, I mean, it's a, a person who really loved the Lord. So, every war brings out your weaknesses. And you have weakness. I mean, you have areas, okay, so you don't have weakness. I'm sorry for, sorry about that. But like maybe you have areas that you are not so strong at as you are in some other areas. So, the test of war, and if, it, if you, the test of war is to make you start strengthening your weaknesses. I remember when, years ago, they said they were going to make an iron dome, a missile defense system, because America could fight whatever, but they, they, were, they wanted to make something that is over America, that if you shoot a missile, it will stop it in the air. And I think they've done it. That's how come others have also learned how to do it. But I don't know if we have that system in Ghana. <laughs> hmm. We should check with the Ministry of Defense. So the test of war, every war that comes is to make you strengthen your weaknesses. May you strengthen the weak part. But those of you who don't have weakness, sorry about saying that. Okay. Number two is to secure the test of war cures passivity. Because everybody is galvanized into action, including the lazy bones and those who are doing nothing and are passive. The test of war makes you sit up. Yes, it makes people sit up. So that's why God allows enemies to make you sit up. And stop thinking everything is okay. And just being a lazy bones floating around on pink clouds of ease. Do you want to continue floating around on pink clouds of ease? 
when there is a war going on, when there's a war going on, everybody who is relaxing gets up. Yes. You think it's easy in Russia. Everybody is being asked to join the army. All the lazy bones who are in their houses, they are all being to join the army. Ukraine, they are asking all of them to join the army. Everywhere, Israel, go join the army. All those who are relaxing, watching Netflix, TikTok, because the soldiers, you see, they are sending messages on TikTok. They get a lot of news from the world from TikTok, Instagram. People were in their houses just playing Instagrams and what have you. Now they are for, go, get up from the house and go shoot. Run, run. Run like a man. You see how Russians left. They've run away from Russia. Yeah. You know, Charlie? Yes. All relaxed people are no more relaxing. So God allows us to have wars so that all relaxed people will stop relaxing. That's the test of war. They send TikToks to their families. TikToks. <laughs> They'll be sending, look at the shooting. They are shooting, they are shooting. Then they send a TikTok. They send a video. YouTubes, TikToks, Instagrams, <laughs> Facebooks. Hey! <laughs> they have all mobile phones. They'll take and they'll be sh sh showing pictures. So all passive. Now, war. Number three, the test of war brings out new supporters. We you start to, it's God allows wars to exist so that your other supporters will rise up to support you. Yes. When Jesus was crucified, it rather caused people to love him. Yeah. Because people can see, what, what is this? So as Ukraine is fighting with Russia, it has brought the support of America. Yesterday, they voted 61 billion. No, apart from the billions. Ghana's budget, I don't know if it's even 100 million or 200. 61 billion dollars. Yeah, you see, war brings your supporters in. That's why Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw men. Hallelujah. When people see you at war, many people decide, I love this person. I love this person. You would think that people don't like, but people rather show their, they rise up to show their love. Wars that we have experienced have caused all kinds of people, I never knew, love me, love the ministry, they all come out of the woods and say, we love you, we believe in you, we support you. Start, we stand with you. I stand with whatever. Number four. Have you got all the points? Hmm. The test of war brings out sleeper enemies. Enemies that are in your midst that you didn't know. Because traitors try to come out. And that's where you see people who are not with you. And then you start to see many enemies are not direct. They are indirect. Type, I am exposing all indirect enemies. There are indirect enemies. But wars bring out indirect enemies and let us see that they are direct. That's what Jesus said. He that is not with me. Is against me. Those are the indirect enemies. You can't see where they stand. Ambivalent people are exposed. So it brings out ambivalence and ambivalent people who are, oh, okay, they don't say anything against this. They don't say. And a lot of people who don't say clearly and don't fight clearly, do you see, who are almost like they seem to support the enemy, they are brought out in your life. And you see, oh, wow. So you are actually an enemy. Yeah, sitting by my side. Huh. So wars bring out all sleeper. In this Ukraine-Russian war, we see people. You see traitors and different people who are not really belonging on either side. They are forced to take a side. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Then the test of war number five. It brings out unthankful people. It brings out orangus and monsters. Yes. Number six, the test of war brings out your patience and your faith. The Bible says, 
In Revelation, the beast made war against the saints. And the Bible says they prevailed against them. In Revelation chapter 13 and verse 4, it says, It was given them to make war with the saints and to overcome the saints and all that dwelt in the earth, all right, shall worship him whose names were not written in the book of life. If any man hear, let have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Test walls brings out patience and faith. Yes. They were allowed to overcome the enemy. They were allowed to overcome the believers. But the Bible says, here is the patience and the faith. So war brings out patience and faith. You need patience to fight a war. Taking of time to fight. Sometimes years you'll be at war. War takes years. The Second World War was from 1939, 1st of September 1939, to 1945. Yes. May 1945. Hitler died on 30th April 1945. That's when he killed himself. Seven days later, the war came to an end. Seven days after he killed himself. The war was ended. 7th May. So it took six years. 1939, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, seven years. Seven years. War needs patience. We'll defeat you, but we take our time to defeat you. Yeah? Legal cases can take 10 years. 15 years, 20 years, especially the more, uh, what do you call it, difficulty there is in the administration of justice. And then war brings out your maturity in handling disloyalty. Yeah, In John chapter 6, Jesus said, the Bible says he spoke of Judas Iscariot for he it was that should betray him. But verse 64, John 6, he says, there are some of you that believe not for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. So from the beginning Jesus knew and he allowed Judas to be at every meeting. Huh? Charlie? He allowed Judas to attend all the meetings. Listen to all the teachings. Listen to all the plans. Huh? Right up to the Last Supper. Judas was even at the Last Supper. And Jesus knew from the beginning, this guy is some way. And he's the one who's going to be there. Allowed him to handle the money. And it was a test for Jesus to be able to handle the reality. Because, you know why? Because whether you, you, you use Dettol or Vim or uh, what? Parazone, you will have betrayers. It's a human nature. People that are, cannot be faithful. But he was able to stay with them, overcome and accomplish his mission in spite of such people. To, to, to have victory in the ministry and in life is to overcome in spite of those who let you down and those who turn against you and those who surprise you. It's a test. And Jesus knew from the beginning. If he had removed him from the beginning, I believe another person would have 
risen up. Who would have been tempt, also tempted, taken on by the devil? Maybe allowing Judas to be Judas protected Peter, Thomas, and some of these Bartholomews and other those guys from becoming also Judas. Yes. Because enemies have a certain effect that is also necessary. Number one, effect of enemies. They make you uh, have a feeling constantly uncertain. Number two, constantly hopeless. Number three, constantly you not care for people anymore. Number four, you become emotionally flat. When somebody betrays you, you become flat. Emotionally, you are not excited about people. Number five, you become constantly paranoid, always afraid. Maybe somebody's going to do this. Maybe somebody's going to do this. That's why a war makes a person mature because you handle all these feelings and you are still normal. Constantly, you can become vindictive. And number seven, you can be prejudiced. When you see the war, if the person who started the war against you was from this tribe, you, you can, this, from that time, you say, anybody from that tribe or that color or that whatever, you say, oh, all whatever, are this and that. Before you realize you've changed. Because you, you didn't start out that way, remember? That's what war does. It makes you mature to be able to handle disloyalty and to overcome the feeling of uncertainty, hopelessness, you don't have hope in anything. You don't have hope. When you see somebody whose heart is broken, that's what they call low dopamine level. He doesn't even want to get out of bed. It just doesn't have no excited our people. It's flat. Doesn't want to even be friend. So when I make you my friend, when I help you, you one day, the same person that was saying thank you, this is what you'll become. The same person who's naming his child after you. I've had a number of people who named their son Dag who have turned on me like wild animals. They named their sons after me, and after that, they became something. So when you see things like that, you just, you, when somebody says, oh, hello, Bishop, it's like Chinese. You are speaking to me, China. I don't understand it. So if you can, that's why the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, well, after some time, you stop rejoicing. You can't even love no man because this man who came said, I love you, Bailey. He gave you a rose. Oh. I said, a rose is what? Another man will come and give you lilies. He said, well, lily is what? Another man will come and say, you are the lily of my valley. He said, whoa. Another man will come with another special sunflower. I said, you are my sunflower. And before I realize, you just slap. He said, remove this flower from there before. Because you've changed. You can't easily love somebody who's been betrayed. It's not lovable. A person doesn't love. But that's a test of war. Because that is what is in the world. When Jacob's father was dying, Isaac and his mother, Rebecca, they begged Esau, don't fight with your brother. Because Esau plans that when my father dies in the Bible, I will kill this man. They begged him. But when the father died, he just said, he said at a point, Esau answered and said, neither the children of men nor of beasts of the earth have any oath of righteousness in which in swearing they have sworn. But every day they devise evil against one another, how each may slay his adversary. And thou dost hate me and my children forever. There is no observing of a tie of brotherhood with thee. Hear these words I declare unto thee. If the boar can change his skin and make his bristles soft as wool, or if it can cause horns to sprout on his head like the horns of a stag of a sheep, then shall I observe the tie of brotherhood with thee. Huh? And if the breasts separated themselves from their mother, for thou hast not been a brother to me. This is what Esau is now saying to his brother. He's quarreling with him. 
It's quarreling with him. And if the wolves can make peace with the lambs, so as not to devour them or do them violence, and if their hearts toward them are good, then there will be peace between me and you. Goodness. And if the lion can become the friend of an ox and make peace with him, then shall I make peace with thee. Sorry. He changed what he promised. He changed. So you see that, then you say, I don't trust brothers. I don't trust anybody. That is what war does. But God gives us a test of war to refine us and to see that after you've been betrayed and mistreated, you are still full of love. Wow. But you see, you can't go. Have you noticed every movie has some betrayal? I want from today, I want you to watch out for betrayal in every movie you watch. Just ask yourself, when is the betrayal part coming? Uh huh. One time I was watching a movie and there was a guy in his house with his mother and his father. Not knowing that the father was the orangu. The father was the one talking to the other people on the phone. Because it was his mother's second husband. So it was a father, but it was not a, a major father. I said, wow. I, I mean, I was just taken aback. I said, wow. You never think that this man can do this. Yeah. So these are the tests of war. Number one, it tests your strengths so that you strengthen your weaknesses. Number two, it cures passivity. Ah, nobody will be sleeping passively anymore. Once orangus have shown their head, everybody wakes up. Is it true or is it not true? Number two, it brings out new supporters. Isn't it? Yes. Number D, it brings out sleeper and or ambivalent people. I, pre- I prefer ambivalent. Change, the, change it to the ambivalent. Ambivalent. Neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. Deceivers. Then it, number it brings out unthankful and ungrateful people. The test of war. And number four, F, it brings... It tests your patience. Yeah, war tests patience. God will allow the enemy. When we bomb the enemy, he wakes up. Gaza, they still fire rockets. After all months of bombing, they can still fire rockets. So where are the rockets coming from? It has been six months. They are looking for 100 hostages. They can't find them. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So don't be discouraged. Some of these endless things, they are all to test you. That's why some of us have certain kinds of marriages. It's to test you for your whole life. Hmm. Sorry for that. I mean, I'm so, yeah. so that instead of home being, instead of home being a place of comfort and rest, it's a place of war. It's a place where you come to balance powers. Sorry for right. <laughs> If you get one like that, that's it. And then it brings out your maturity in handling disloyalty. And that's why Jesus kept Judas as a member. I mean, he was telling them, you go out and ask, my father has sent me, so I send you. I mean, he was talking to them. Judas was listening to him. He didn't believe all these things. He believed in money and making it in this life. Wow. What a person to have at a meeting. May you never be the Judas. But perhaps the Judas was there to prevent another Judas from coming up. Yeah, because it looks like by all means you will have it. So sometimes when you see somebody who has manifested himself as a wild orangu, you say, oh, thank you for taking the place for all of us. It looks like that thing has fallen on you. Wow. Stand to your feet, please. We've closed. The test of Mara, the test of the wilderness. I am not making them tests. I'm reading to you what the Bible says is a test. I'm not, I've not created a test. Like maybe in my mind, I think that these are tests that God does. No, no. This is, it's written in the Bible, the word test. It said that he will test you by them, by this war. 
So whatever conflict you are going through, I know it's a bit long. How many have had something that should have ended long time ago, but it's still on? It's all the test of war to see what you are made of and to make you strengthen your weaknesses. It shows you your lovers. It shows you your enemies. It brings out the ambivalent people. It makes you a stable person. Yeah. And God is testing to see whether you become hopeless, you become vindictive, whether you become flat, whether you become prejudiced, whether you be without hope, without emotions anymore. And that's why he says rejoice always. Yes. And whether you become uptight. Uptight. You'll never be uptight. Amen. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for the test of war that we are passing beautifully today in the mighty name of Jesus. Lay your hands on your head right now. Father, let everyone experiencing the test of war be strengthened to fight on. For here is the faith and the patience of your saints. Give them the upper hand in every battle. Give them superiority over enemies. Give them patience, stamina to survive, to prevail, to overcome. Every test and every facet of every test of war. I pray and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. As every head is bowed, you want to give your life to Jesus today? I want to pray with you just a simple prayer. Say this prayer where you are, wherever you are watching, listening. Say, Jesus, take my life. I give my heart to you. Please write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take out your special offering. God bless you. If you give your life to Jesus, right there on the screen is a message. Take out your special offering and your gift for the Lord as we close this service and then your communion uh, if those of you who fly sometimes they give you a bottle of wine you can just pick it up use it at home for communion all right yeah they have these little bottles of wine you can just take one say oh can i have a bottle of wine and you use it for communion at home okay don't forget take your give your offering please quickly please as we get ready for amazing communion time Oh, for all our flu members, where you are, maybe you are in school or maybe where you are, your school is very far from where there's church. So this is your church. So everything is happening here live. And Flow Church has a church service every day. We are on every day. There's a Flow Church pastor or Flow Church live flow prayer meeting. Every time there's church, Flow Church is on daily. You can find Flow Church live. Live, live transmission with humans that are living. Lively and living, broadcasting live. You can call, you can text, you can contact. So don't forget, this is your church away from wherever church is. Amen. Church everywhere. Church at home. Church in your car. Church in your room. Father, bless us as we sow this seed today. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Your Holy Communion. Father, thank you for the blessing you give to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. The body of Jesus. Body of Jesus. Let the church let them say amen. If you believe the word, let the whole church say amen. God has spoken So let the church Say Amen Now hold the cup Lift your hands If you have a cup Now this is what's going to happen When we start to drink A blessing is going to flow down your throat And into your body That's what the Bible says The cup of blessing the cup of blessing which we bless is going to be drunk into you, into your whole body. 
lift up the cup lord thank you for a cup of blessing for everyone we bless this cup let the blood of jesus flow into us and bless our being cleanse our sin oh yes heal our body yes jesus whatever the blessing is may we receive a blessing as we drink of this cup of blessing of the body and the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Everybody receive receive into your being a blessing. The Lord bless you. The Lord multiply you. The Lord make you a multitude. Be thou Lord over thy brethren. Let people serve thee. Let nation be subdued by you. The Lord bless you and bless your whole family. The Lord give you abundance. The Lord give you abundance. Abundance of houses. Abundance of cars. Abundance of corn. Abundance of food. Abundance of oil. Abundance of wine. May your smell be the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May your scent be the scent of something that God has poured a blessing on. May you bring out a smell of prosperity and blessings and a good feeling let it come from your life the Lord bless you Lord remember all your prayers that you have prayed in his name in Jesus name Father I bless all my children that you gave to me and all the family of the flow church all over the world increase them let them be a multitude that cannot easily be counted. Thank you for a great healing. And now lift your hand for the wars of your life. May the Lord strengthen you to be the victor. Let enemies bow to you and submit. Let enemies agree that you are the victor. May your, your leg, your right leg, be placed upon the head of your enemy yes, Lord. in the name of Jesus, yes, the Savior of the world. Well, well, well. Let small boys be called champions yes, and great servants of the Lord yes, Lord in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Now, I just want to say before we finally go that the flow church is a great blessing on tuesday by the grace of god we have a prayer meeting 4 a.m gmt but different time zones pacific and so on everybody's 4, 4 a.m but on friday we had a wedding a flow wedding so you see the flow wedding i believe we, we saw about twelve thousand people uh were part of that when i and i know your wedding in, in the you know, if you are not in Fluch, I don't think 12,000 people will attend your, yeah, but 12,000 people attend. It's like the worldwide people attending your wedding. Yeah. It's a major wedding. Yes. That's a crusade. That's a crusade. That's a convention. Father, bless all the flow members that have participated. Bless, let there be more weddings. Yes, let there be more increase. Let there be more healing. Touch the lives of your children. No, no matter where we are, we thank you that there is a presence, but there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. There's no distance in the realm of the spirit. Let help from God come into your room and into your dwelling place by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, let the flow check be blessed with abundance and increase of all good things for everyone wherever in the name of jesus who 
died for all of us and rose up triumphant. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let the church say, let the church say, blessing we're too blessed right we're so so blessed powerful powerful thank you prophet for another powerful powerful flow sunday service we're too blessed thank you so much for joining us we can see those on zoom as well first of nottingham under pastor senna god bless you for joining us on zoom today it's been great to have you hope to see you again very very soon what a blessing what a blessing what a blessing all too soon we have come to the end but make sure before you go like prophet was saying we have many many services coming up from different flow pastors pastor emmanuel we've got bishop Pius, many many blessed men of god preaching for us so make sure before you go you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of these upcoming services it's an absolute blessing it's an absolute blessing so you've liked to subscribe on facebook on instagram on youtube as well we have some services happening on instagram so make sure as well you subscribe, follow, so you don't miss out on those as, as well. We'll be live again on Tuesday, 4 a.m. GMT, for the Flow Prayer Meeting. It's an absolute blessing. We'll see you there. Maybe you've not come before. This is the time you'll come. This Tuesday, 4 a.m. GMT, we want to see you there for the Flow Prayer Meeting. If you gave your life to Christ, if you have a testimony, stay with us. We'll have... A uh, little reel on screen for you. It will go through. It will go through all the numbers. You can contact us. So if you gave your life to Christ, if you want to be a Flow Church member, if you want to register with us. We'll get the numbers on the screen. There should also be a link on the YouTube, a link on the Facebook as well to join. But the messages will be on the screen and reach out, and it'll be a blessing to hear from you. God bless you. It's been an absolute blessing today. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you very very soon i'm pastor seamus it's been a blessing i'll see you next time so let the church say say amen yeah can i get a win let the church oh. say amen to what his plans are let the church to what his word says say Let the church say amen. Amen. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Make this your response to whatever he said. From the healing of your body to the raising of the dead. No matter how you feel it or how your world is really. Let the church sing. Sing.